Here I am with uh, the good old Rotterdam at Homestoy Cup, day three. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. I slept a lot better this uh, last night than I did the night before. I don't know why, but the night before I woke up after I fell asleep like at one maybe and I woke up at four and I just couldn't go back to back and I was like, oh my god, I know these days, it could be very long. So in the end I fell asleep again at seven, but I knew it was going to be a rough day and I think at the end of the day it was, but last night I slept really good, so I'm excited for Saturday. All right, right, and of course Saturday we saw a couple of upsets, maybe not upsets, but surprising results. For example, uh, Marino versus TLO, we went up to game five, three, two, we had the German crowd cheering for TLO really, really hard. So what do you think, what, can you, what can you say about that match in a nutshell? Uh, it was really cool. I mean, the first time that they went up against each other, it was also 3-2 and it had like all the drama. It was 1-0 for TLO, then 2-1 for Marine Lloyd, it ended up 3-2 for TLO. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really cool. I mean, you know, whenever Home Story Cup goes past, let's say 7, 8 p.m., I mean, we are in a bar environment after <laughs> all, so there's a lot of the fans, you know, having a beer and all the Germans were getting very loud and that's awesome. You know, you can see TLO really enjoying it as well when they're all going crazy. The games were good. It was like some from Hellion, uh, felt like I was watching Natania's stream, you know, <laughs> Hellion Cyclone all day, some really good like advanced uh, Ballistics Liberator, Ghost Control by Marino, mm -hmm. it was just a very fun series and then they did it again in the Decidus match and this time it was the exact other way around, you know, 1-0 uh, Marine Lord, 2-1 TLO but then 3-2 Marine Lord, so it pretty much had all the drama you can imagine, perfect storyline, that was a really fun series, like both of them. All right, and also I hate to be a downer, but uh, I was down in the players area, mm -hmm. and a lot of the like the mostly the Zerg players and some Protoss players were complaining about how uh, Marino with three X Reaper a lot. Yes. And then he would transition out of that, doing like the Nathania Cyclone build. Mm -hmm. So what can you say about the the three Rex build? Um. I actually didn't see him go from Reapers into Hellion Cyclone because mostly he's doing it on maps like New Gettysburg and stuff and that's not really a Reaper map. Uh, Three Rex Reaper, I mean it's really quite funny because we were having a lot of discussion about it on the couch as well and mm -hmm. to be honest I kind of feel that I love the BlizzCon finals but I still felt that two games were kind of stolen and ruined by Three Rex Reaper. So I think it's safe to say that when you watch some Terrans like including Uturmo and even mm -hmm. Kalazur to some degree, I know a lot of people will say like, how can you name Kalazur there but he's really freaking good with Reapers that it's not maybe necessarily the fact that it's super imbalanced even though it does seem pretty damn strong but it's also just not that fun when you know what's going to come and when you know what's going to happen and you still see these really good Zerg struggling so much to deal with mm -hmm. it uh, but there was one Zerg on the couch that kept saying like it's obviously not that bad guys like no it's actually not that fine I don't mind it when they do it and obviously that had to be TLO because TLO lost to disagree with what everybody else says but <laughs> he handled it really well like not in a single of the games I felt that he was truly that far behind after the Reapers if anything every single time that Marino Mar Mar did open up with Free Rocks Reaper I would say that TLO actually put himself in a pretty good position so I don't know, maybe TLO knows something that everybody else doesn't know, or maybe Marine Lloyd is just not as good with Reapers as, let's say, Uturmo, Kalazur, and obviously like guys like Beyond and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, um, it's a strat that if it goes, I wouldn't be terribly sad about it as a soccer fan. <laughs> Some also were saying it's like the old 1 1 1, that you know it's coming, you try to prepare everything for it, and it's still impossible to defend. Yep. Like, for example, uh, the Kalazur versus Lambo game, which is day one. <laughs> the, the Kalazur went 3 0, and all he did was, was 3 Rex Reaper. I know. And Lambo, after the games, I was in the play area when they were playing, and he was visibly mad for like yeah. a split second then he was like this straight up guy like so nice he goes shake his hand and everything yeah Lambo was a really good dude <laughs> yeah. but you could see he was pretty devastated by mm -hmm. it he was incredibly tilted because he knew what was coming and Lambo also really wanted to perform this home story cup because I think Lambo is a lot better than a lot of the international fans know like you know the top European players they will all respect Lambo and they know that he's never an easy, easy matchup mm -hmm. but he's never really performed at a bigger tournament an international tournament so a lot of people you know they see Lambo as this German that just gets invited because he's German he's gonna lose but he's so much better than that so he really wanted to show that as well and there's a funny story behind it as well because apparently he was talking a lot with Solar and he's like hey Solar you know what should I do it's three drugs reap all the time mm -hmm. hey, should I make roaches like get ravages quickly queens or links and Solar's like oh no no you know just make queen and link he's like are you sure he's like yeah yeah queen and link <laughs> and Lambo ended up losing 3-0 he goes to Solar he's like hey man like I lost 3-0 Solar's like what did you do he's like yeah queen and link yeah, yeah you can do that <laughs> like, uh, yeah I did hear the story <laughs> I was like, what the hell, man? You just told me the complete opposite. So, yeah, I felt, I kind of felt bad for him, man. I can understand that it's frustrating, you know. It's like, 
Obviously, soccer is a strategy game where execution matters more than strategy most of the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. But we also saw the opposite a couple of times this tournament, where you truly see people win just on strategy alone. I mean, Rogue makes some couple of great strategic decisions on day one when he was playing. Uh, was it Protoss? Uh, Hossam, he was actually playing like the game on King Sejong. Like mm -hmm. if you tell anybody, you know, if any Gold League or Diamond League or Master League, Zerg tells you that you should make a proxy spy in Middlesk against a double target <laughs> build, everyone will tell you shut. <laughs> You have no idea what you're talking about, but mm -hmm. Rogue just playing it so well, hiding it so well, making it really a game of information which Harsim didn't have, and then making it work and stuff, so yeah, it was really cool to watch. All right, okay, so from this point we're just going to transition to talk about a little bit about the, the balance changes. The huge patch is dropping soon. Yeah. Like uh, as a Protoss player, uh, the new Tempest, uh, they have a new ability that's basically just a static field, a huge stun. Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel about that? Uh, to be honest, I haven't even seen that one in action yet. I played around a little bit when they got the bubble, you know, the mm -hmm. area of effect damage yeah. Uh, yeah, bubble. Yeah, it's, it's, that's what it is. No, it's the same, uh, same thing, but instead yeah. it just stuns people. Yeah, uh, to be honest, <laughs> things look really grim for us Protoss bros out there, and I have no freaking idea. <laughs> how Zest won this GSL tournament and all the other Protoss players like Harsim and so was like no you don't tell me he won like yeah he won like what the hell is this like because apparently like everybody's like so what is exactly happening over here I feel like at the highest level like the absolute highest level mm -hmm. Zerg is doing pretty good against Protoss right now you know yeah, like the yeah. Links, the Banes like it seems to work out quite well for them with Ravages transitioning and now in the next patch you look at it it's like all right War Prism gets a nerf. Adapts, well, they lose massive their eyes, nerf. so yeah, that's a nerf. massive nerf. <laughs> Tempest got nerfed. Meanwhile, you know the Hydra, you know what, giving an attack ball. Of, <laughs> you know, Bailing's 10 extra HP is like, what are they thinking? And how the f <laughs> you know, did Zess win that tournament? It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. So, I don't exactly know. I don't know that much about the Tempest uh, new ability, but. I think the attack range went from what is it like 15 to 9 or something like that. Yeah, it got the the, the range got nerfed. Yeah, that's yeah. insane. Like that's a massive nerf as well. So, yeah, I think uh, the upcoming months is probably going to be a couple of big cry streams from my part, where I'm just going to be like, okay, how on earth are they expecting me to win? But you know, in the end, these guys are so good. You you mm -hmm. look at this building, you see stats as uh, as Zess walking around, and you got Neep and stuff, Drogo as well. Like these guys, they will always find a way to make stuff work, but. I can't deny the fact that I think right now things look pretty rough for Protoss, but I mean, Zest won, so I guess it's possible. Also, uh, like in the players area, some were saying, like talking about the DT blink, they're saying it's pretty useless because Bar Prism is basically a blink. So you think that it's a weird direction where Blizzard is going while trying to give more new abilities to Dark Templars? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a weird direction because I always feel like the more options you have, the better, right? Mm -hmm. And if it's something that's in the game, why not? Like, you know, in the past, Blizzard has said multiple times that they don't want to put units in the game that they feel will not be used all that much. And I don't necessarily agree upon that sense. Like, you know, I would love to have those units that have been removed in the past, you know, like the Shredder and uh, <laughs> the War and stuff like that. Yeah, they were really imbalanced at that time, but that doesn't mean you can adjust it. Mm -hmm. And even if they would nerf it too much and it doesn't work, at a certain time, I always feel that there is some genius out there that somehow finds a composition for it to make work. And that's like that tournament where you're suddenly like, oh my god, you know, that's sick. We haven't seen this unit in forever. So I always feel the more the merrier, and the same goes with his upgrade. But like, it sounded really sick at first. I was like, oh my god. But then when I started playing a little bit of the test map, I played like uh, during Gamescom, I was invited to be there as a streamer mm -hmm. by Blizzard. I played quite a bit of test map. And I was like, yeah, you know, like, this takes forever. This yeah, this is, is a huge upgrade. This is an upgrade that right you on, get yeah. when you're on four bases. Like, there is no such thing as let's rush Blink DTs and out micro my opponent with Blink DTs or something <laughs> like that. That just doesn't work. By the time that you have that, you know, they're going to have so much team bio or there will be so many overseers, that many links that if you just send in the TDs alone, they're going to die anyway. A lot of people say, like, it's kind of like the prism. I can see some ways where maybe it's, it can be used in at least cooler ways than a prism. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessarily useless or the exact same, but it's definitely not groundbreaking or something. All right, so, like, general idea after the patch, it's going to be a huge moment of instability for Protoss. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, I think it's going to be very rough. Like, uh, once again, like, I didn't see the games that Zest played. I mean, it's been a very busy week, and I, did, I feel like I did, like, seven tournaments in the last three months, so, like, my brain is just overloaded with the amount of Starcraft suited mm -hmm. on points. Didn't see that tournament. But, yeah, I, I am curious. Let's put it like that. And, obviously, I will always just, you know, good spirit, sit down, yeah. try to play my see own how it games. Goes. And see how it goes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do my best and see how it goes. Take some notes from the best. Watch a couple streams. I mean, there's some good product streamers out there, like 91 stuff that you can mm -hmm. really learn a lot from. So, 
let's just take it easy. But right now, if you're asking my honest opinion, is I think we're pretty screwed. <laughs> like, I think it's going to be very hard. <laughs> All right. So now let's transition back into uh, Home Story Cup. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give you some groups, and you're going to say who's the person who's going to advance in first place, but don't say why, okay? Okay. All right. So group A is SOS, Stats, Namshar, Laser. Who's first? E-Laser. All right. Now uh, group C, Zest, TY, Patience, and U-Thermal. Uh, that's a hard one, but maybe Zest. Yeah, not. You don't think Ty can get this? I think Ty can get this. I absolutely think he can get it, but yeah. you told me to just pick one. And like <laughs> Zest, traditionally, like in the beginning of 2016, like his PVT was really incredibly good. I don't think he looked that great at BlizzCon, but I think that was mostly because of his PVP. But I think it's good enough to beat Patience. But that is it's a very hard group to call. I mean, Saturday is awesome, man. Like, these groups are really stacked. Like, the first two days, <laughs> Home Story Cup is always about chilling, sitting on the couch, we mm -hmm. make some jokes. Jeff does his red-eye impression. It's all good, you know. <laughs> and, like, we just have a good time together. But now it, it really becomes some very serious StarCraft, so it's hard to call. All right. So, okay, so now for two other groups, you can say who comes in third. Okay. okay so, group B, Alive, Tidrogo, Nib, and sort of. Uh, it's super hard, but I'd say... Third place. Uh, it, this is a group where honestly all four of them can win it and mm -hmm. all four of them can end last as well. Like yeah, these are all pretty good it, players. It's really yeah, freaking yeah. hard to call. They're so evenly matched, but for some reason Neep is currently in third and I have the feeling that he <laughs> might stay there. But if you ask me who's going to be fourth, then I don't know. Like, it, It's so hard to call. Like, Some people will be like, come on, how can you say that Sword of or Drogo are in the level of Neep in our life? But Sword of is like one of the absolute best Zergs in Europe. He really has yeah. sick mechanics, yeah. he's freaking fast. And it's, you know, we saw him at DreamHack Valencia, if my memory is correct, where he had a freaking sick run, made it to the semifinals. Mm -hmm. If sort of is on point, he's really freaking good. And I also think that Drogo has been playing really good since BlizzCon. Oh, he has, yeah. I thought yeah. he was awesome at BlizzCon. Like, yeah, okay, he didn't beat Dark or anything. But he surprised a lot of people. Yeah, but he, but he played solid, man. Like, and he beat Snoot and that stuff there as well. So there's absolutely no way that Drogo has no chance here. And yeah, Alive looked really good in the round of 32, and it's still freaking Alive. I mean, he won IPL in the past and he seems to be, be playing all right but at the same time his builds are different and these guys are good enough to figure it out and Neep right now is just yeah Neep is obviously still incredibly freaking good I mean the kid won Casper Cup but that was mostly off the back of his insane PvP uh, people that don't watch all the time be like Neep will make it out of this group all the time and there's a good chance he will like don't mm -hmm. get me wrong it's still freaking Neep but there's also a chance he won't so yeah I'm gonna say that Neep gets started there all right so what about group D Snoot, Solar, Rogue and Marine Lord well, I, in the past, if you would have asked me this group, I would have really thought that Marino had a good shot there. Mm -hmm. But it just seems that Marino is right now not as good as he once upon a time was. So, third place, I would say uh, it's going to be Rogue. And I think Solar and Snoot will advance here. Yeah, Snoot has pretty good ZVZ. Yeah. So, we'll see how that goes. So, thanks, Rodan, for the interview. Uh, do you have yeah. any shout outs right before we end? Well, let's just hope that by the time this interview is up, I won't be wrong about every single group where I'm going <laughs> to look really dumb. But it's hard to predict before, okay, guys? Uh, no, not really any shout outs. Shout out to KJ, actually, from Sidestorm mm -hmm. Gaming, who's really keeping the North American scene alive and he's really doing whatever he can to. You know, just uh, pump some life into it and <laughs> like not just support the absolute top players, but also that level below. Mm -hmm. And I think that gives like a lot of hope for, you know, those top 30, top 40, top 50 GM players on NA that are not quite pro yet, but want to get there, but I have no idea. Like, you know, I can't join a Liquid, I can't join an EG. It really seems that Sidestorm Gaming is, uh, you know, that great stepping stone. And obviously you guys want to be more than a stepping oh, of course, stone, but, yeah, yeah. you know, you're looking into that pool of players mm -hmm. and you're giving people a chance. So I think KJ is doing great work for StarCraft, so shout out to my man KJ. Alright, I'm sure you're just gonna appreciate that. Thank you, Rodan. You're welcome, mate. Have a good day.